Hello again. It's the eve of the 60th anniversary of the EU. Can you believe it? With tomorrow marking six decades since France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg all signed the Treaty of Rome. That treaty, of course, paved the way for what we now know as the modern European Union. 28 countries, 510 million people. And European leaders are gathering in Rome to celebrate the occasion, all apart from Theresa May of the UK. But with the Brexit vote and deep internal divisions over migration policy, the future of the Union's Pretty unclear right now. Uh, gauging uh, the mood among EU leaders is my colleague uh, Karen Giannone, who's in Rome. Hello, Karen. Hi, Chris. Well, uh, later today, those 27 European Union leaders, with the notable exception, as you mentioned, of the British Prime Minister Theresa May, will be attending a private audience with the Pope at the Vatican behind me. Some commentators are joking that they are turning to God in this, their hour. Of need. But what is this anniversary all about? Is it hope for the future or is it fears for the EU's very survival? With me is Lorenzo Marsili, of, uh, the founding director of European Alternatives. Lorenzo Marsili, 60 years of the EU, what sort of moment is this? It's a pivotal moment. It's a make it or break it moment. It's the moment when we need to break away from a false dichotomy. On the one side, in Rome tomorrow, you will see the establishment, the status quo, business as usual. And on the other, you will see the outcome of that business as usual, which is disintegration, populism, far-right extremism. We need to break out of this with ambitious policies and the political force to take them forwards. You say ambitious, some would say radical and unrealistic. We need sensible policies. We need policies that are able to put Europeans back to work. We need politics that, policies that are able to provide an investment plan to kickstart Europe's economy. We need policies that provide security and safety to those most affected by the financial crisis 10 years after it first broke out. This is sensible common sense. And, and what does that do to help the, the short-term problems that Europe is dealing with at the moment? The migrant crisis, countries in the east of the EU closing their borders. Well, the migrant crisis is twofold in the EU. We have an infra-European migration issue, which was very much at the heart of the Brexit debate. Uh, this is people from the eastern and southern countries moving to the north. And the answer is to give them secure jobs and safety in their communities of origins. People don't choose to migrate because the food is better in England. They go there because they have no other chance in their home countries. So kicking, kick-starting Europe's economy is an answer to that. And then we have a second uh, refugee and migration crisis, which is extra-European, people escaping war zones. And here, and it's good to say this in front of the Vatican, the answer can be only one. If somebody shows at your door at night and is wounded, he's sick, uh, he's afraid, what you need to do is to open the door, feed them, make them feel safe, and after that you ask them questions. And some would say that's what Angela Merkel precisely did and that got a, into a whole lot of mess in Germany. Well, I think the rise of the far right in Germany is grossly overestimated. And what you call mess is actually the only policy in the last year that showed that Europe is not a morally bankrupt continent yet. Where does Europe go from here? I mean, do you believe that any of what you're suggesting might be taken on board? I don't believe uh, the current leadership has the capacity to take Europe out of its mess. That is where I think new political forces... But these are, new these are democratically elected prime ministers. Well, we need to be able to construct a political alternative that voters will think is a viable alternative to the status quo. That is the challenge that uh, new political parties have in front of them today. It's our duty to save Europe from itself. It's not going to be the 27 heads of state meeting tomorrow what caused its disintegration that will get us out of this You're mess. You're saying that they caused this, what we're seeing today, that they only have themselves to blame? This is certainly the case. It is 10 years of failed austerity policies that have led to Brexit, that have led uh, to the crisis uh, that Europe is in today, that have led to the rise of extremism on the right. They are the uh, uh, pyromaniacs that have set Europe on fire. And we need to find the good guys to solve the problem before it's too late. Lorenzo Marsili of European Alternatives, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Well, those at 27 are hoping to leave Rome at the end of Saturday with some kind of a declaration signed charting a path for the next decade at uh, this time of great challenges. Back to you, Chris, in London. Karen, thank you for that.